Hello. Today we're talking about whether 100 men would be able to beat one gorilla in a fight. If you're watching this, you've probably seen a lot of stuff on the internet about 100 men versus one gorilla. And I've watched a lot of the videos and articles and stuff about it, and none of them really answer the question very well. And since I haven't been able to find a whole lot of good research on it that's been presented in a popular way, I thought that's what we do today. So in order to get a handle on the situation of 100 men versus one gorilla, we're gonna go over some gorilla fun facts, clear up some misconceptions, and then at the end we will answer the question. But the funny thing about this question is that a lot of the problems are actually in the phrasing and the definition of the exact words. So let's start first with the gorilla. There's actually four types of gorillas. The Eastern gorilla, the Eastern lowland gorilla, the mountain gorilla, and the Western lowland gorilla. And the four subspecies are all a little bit different size and have a little bit of different behavior. So to simplify, we'll pick an eastern gorilla because they're the largest, and we'll pick a male instead of a female. As you'll see, the exact type of gorilla doesn't really matter, but we'll just pick the biggest and the strongest gorilla, just in case. Male eastern gorillas are about 1.7 meters tall, or about 5.6 feet, and they weigh somewhere between 140 to 205 kilograms. So that's one half of our battle. The other half of the battle is, who are these 100 men? In order to make it fair, let's go ahead and use average numbers as well. So the average man is about 171 centimeters tall. And obviously that depends on the country that you draw from. But let's go ahead and use global averages. According to this article called The Weight of Nations by Walpole, Prido Marino, Edwards, Cleveland, Stevens, and Roberts, on average a person weighs 62 kilograms. Of course, that's the body mass for an average person and not an average man. And since man weighs something like 15% more than women, we can round it up to 66 kilograms for the average man. So again, here's our combatants in the one versus 100. We've got one gorilla who weighs about three times as much as a man, but there are a hundred of those men. And before we get into the actual science and all the fun gorilla facts, we need to discuss one other word in the prompt which is the word win, because animals in nature don't fight for no reason, right? So in order to say who would win in a fight, we need to determine what's the fight about and what does winning mean? For example, most animals in nature are fighting in order to run away or to just not die at that exact moment. And there's also different types of fights where you might fight to a greater or lesser extent, depending on what the stakes are. So let's go over the scenarios and see what would naturally happen. First, if you have 100 humans approach a gorilla, the gorilla runs away. That's situation one, I guess. So one point for the humans. And you might think, no, I've seen gorillas charge. They defend their territory, whatever. 100 is a lot of people. For example, there's this website that's about visualizing crowd sizes, and this is what 100 people looks like. Now remember, this is 100 people, not 100 men, and so one gorilla is the size of maybe four of these people. So imagine there's a gorilla standing here by this gigantic crowd. There's no way that the gorilla is going to stand. And one of the big problems that people think that gorillas are fearless or aggressive and the reality is they're neither. They're very peaceful. There is, I believe, one recorded instance of a human being killed by a gorilla, which I'll get to later. But because gorillas fight each other for mates and for territory, they're pretty good at sizing up the opposition. And a gorilla would very easily be able to tell that 100 people is too many people. I think part of the misconception is people don't understand how big gorillas are. They'll think, oh, yeah, gorillas as tall as a human, but way broader. But this is not how big a gorilla is. This is how big a gorilla is. And again, these are the bigger gorillas. There's also gorillas that are this size. You see they're face to face with somebody who's sitting down. Here's an example of a dead gorilla around eight people. And again, you can see that the gorilla is larger than each one individually, but even a relatively small group pretty quickly makes the gorilla seem small. So that was round one. The gorilla runs away. Does letting the gorilla get away count as a win? I really don't know. If these humans are fit enough to persistence hunt like we did ancestrally, then they could just follow the gorilla because eventually the gorilla would overheat and die. So that would definitely be a win for humans. But we have to remember that humans are animals too. So if we go into round two, where somehow the gorilla is forced to stay in place, is not able to run, it has to fight to the death. What about the humans? Because even if everybody thinks, oh, a hundred men could definitely beat a gorilla, Who's going to be the first man to step up? Because I haven't seen anybody debate whether one gorilla could beat one man. Everybody knows that a gorilla would definitely kill one man. So who's going to be the one to step up and actually take one for the team and die? The answer is probably nobody. So round two is also a draw because 
than it's a hundred men just milling around awkwardly at this bloodlusted gorilla that has to stand there. And then if for some reason the gorilla charges, and if the gorilla does one of its short charges, then all the people would just run away. So then still a draw because nobody won. They're just, the, there's no fight really happens. Oh, and this wasn't really stated in the most viral version of the question, but obviously if there's any kind of tool or weapon use, humans clearly win because we can just look at history and see that the gorillas are really no match for us. Even something as simple as if people are allowed to pick up long sticks, no chance for the gorilla. If people are allowed to throw rocks, absolutely no chance for the gorilla because humans are the best throwers in the entire world. We're excellent at it and hundreds of rocks being chucked at your face is going to stop most animals pretty quickly. Now we can talk about maybe a round four, which I think is what this sort of trend is all about, which is somehow the gorilla is trapped and can't run away. Somehow the humans are trapped and can't run away and there's no weapons or tools of anything allowed. So it's a hundred naked men versus one naked gorilla. Although I guess it'd be more unusual if it wasn't a naked gorilla. Have gorillas ever worn clothes? Okay, turns out when you search gorilla clothes, you don't get gorillas with clothes. You get clothes that make you look like a gorilla. But I did find a stock image of this gorilla wearing a blanket or something. Anyway, the point is no weapons, clothes, tools, nothing. It's just body versus body. So now we get to talk about gorilla fun facts. Gorilla's arms are much longer than humans. They're about a foot longer or 30 centimeters longer each. And those arms are pretty interesting because they are able to climb with them, which is very impressive for their body weight, but they're not able to punch with them. Instead, they'll do something like a, a palm slam or a slap. On top of that, they do a lot of wrestling and grappling type moves. Although human wrestlers don't normally jump quite so high. They also sometimes go in for shoulder slams, like this fellow who thinks he's run into a rival. And you can see that there's quite a lot of muscle on these gorillas and they're quite athletic, but there's a whole lot of bullshit around what a gorilla is able to do as well. While I was doing research for this, I kept seeing the statistic that gorillas had four times the muscle density of humans. It's just not true. This paper called Body Mass and Lowland Gorillas by Zillman and McFarland shows that they had on average 37.3% muscle relative to body mass, which is almost exactly the same as a human. Maybe this is rounding up in a misinterpretation of muscle mass in total. Like a gorilla has maybe three times as much of the actual physical muscle tissue as a human does, but it's certainly not density. There's also all these fake figures online about people saying how strong a gorilla punch is. Gorillas can't punch. That's They don't have... They don't have the back and shoulder and arm and hand development to do that. So if you've ever heard anyone say, oh, a Gorilla Punch is really strong, they've probably been playing too much Super Smash Brothers. I've also seen a lot of claims that they're 10 times stronger than a human. And I was able to find no source for this from hours and hours of searching. It seems to just be someone made it up and said maybe they're 10 times stronger, who knows? And another example where I kept seeing that they were able to deadlift 2,000 pounds. A gorilla's never deadlifted anything. What are you talking about? But for that one, I was able to find the source. So this is why it's important to check where your information comes from because the source for that was the 1989 Guinness Book of World Records. And even in that book, they said it was an extrapolation because they had some data from a chimpanzee and then they just scaled it up to the size of a gorilla even though chimpanzees and gorillas are different animals, they work differently. And the thing about that is that the information that they used was also proven wrong. Let me explain. So in this paper from 1926 called Observation on the Strength of the Chimpanzee and Its Implications by John Bauman, Bauman built a device like this in order to trick chimpanzees in order to actually test strength. Although it's worth noting that this was actually a follow-up paper that was done in 1943 by Glenn Finch but it was the same setup. Chimpanzee was here behind a wire wall and had to pull the rope in order to get the incentive, for example, a small piece of banana. And every time they were successful, another weight was added on. And that continued until the chimp couldn't actually pull the rope and get the incentive. Now, in the original experiment, two monkeys named Suzette and Boma, who were originally circus monkeys, were able to pull some very heavy weights indeed. And Bauman compared it to football players and found that Boma, for example, was something like four times the strength of 
these football players. And this here might be where this four times as strong as a human thing comes from. But in Finch's repeated experiment, something like 20 years later, one of the human subjects was stronger than every chimpanzee, and every human was stronger than every female chimpanzee. So that means that this fake extrapolation of how much a gorilla can deadlift is based off of data that couldn't be reproduced based on chimpanzees. Not only are gorillas not four times stronger than humans, but chimpanzees are also not four times stronger than humans. So check the sources of your data and if there's been updated science. Okay, so they might not be 10 times as strong. They might not be four times as strong, but gorillas are really strong. For example, here's a gorilla walking past a ranger and just deciding to take him for a little drag, seemingly without effort. Here's another video of gorillas using both their strength and intelligence to break some ropes in order to, well, actually, I'm not really sure what they were doing. They were just having a good time, I guess. I saw some math that estimated the breaking points of these ropes as something like 10 kilonewtons. And although this is the only evidence I could find, a native of the Baringo tribe in Uganda accidentally surprised a family of gorillas and his body was found minus a head and with one of his arms torn off. And obviously if a gorilla is strong enough to rip off an arm and a head, it's strong enough to rip off an ear or break a bone. So there's no real question about if the gorilla could hurt this group of humans that somehow stuck there with no tools and no clothes and has to fight to the death. The real question is how strong are these average humans and what are they able to do barehanded against this gorilla? Well, one of the first things you'll notice about this gorilla is that it's got a lot of extra fur, which makes sense because fur can be used to cushion blows. And if you remember from here, the gorillas are mostly fighting each other face to face, so their top halves are more protected. Funnily enough, that also fits in with the pugilism hypothesis for the evolution of beards. This is a really interesting paper by Viserys, Nailway, and Carrier, but essentially it demonstrated how effective even a relatively small amount of hair or fur is at reducing the shock from blows. And even though humans have something like 5 million hairs on our bodies and gorillas only have 1 million, gorilla hairs can be up to 4 inches long and they're much thicker and springier than human hair. And there was this paper called Biomechanical Assessment of Various Punching Techniques by Adam Eckhoffer, Pittner, Monticelli, Gra, and Schupfer, which is helpfully summarized in this human punch force calculator to show that our average 66 kilogram weight man would probably only be able to hit with the force of about 836 newtons, which is just 188 pounds of force. And something tells me that with all that fur and all that body mass, the gorilla would pretty much be able to just drug that off, unless it was well aimed and coordinated. And despite how strong gorillas are, they pretty much only fight against one other gorilla at a time. That's why they only have this extra protection around the head and shoulders. But their ears would tear off just like a human's would. Their genitals could be stomped. Their eyes could be gouged out. And they have a whole back half with a lot less fur that could definitely be attacked. So in my mind, there is no doubt that in this completely impossible situation where there's one gorilla that can't and won't run versus a hundred humans that can't and won't run. The humans will absolutely win in a fight to the death. There's too many vulnerable spots. There's no way for the gorilla to deal with a coordinated attack. And if you think, oh, well, the punches of a human couldn't possibly hurt a gorilla because they're so much bigger and stronger than us anyway, no problem, because I figured out a way to compare this between an adult human versus a bunch of children, which is another one of those classic questions you always hear running around. Now, anyone who has children or, or had siblings that are a lot younger than you knows that they can absolutely hurt you if they hit you in the right spot. Even a tiny child grabbing you by the nose is uncomfortable. And they do that by accident. There isn't a hundred of them trying to hurt you. In order to complete this comparison, we need to basically estimate how much bigger and stronger a gorilla is than an average man. And then we need to figure out what the equivalent sized child is that is that same amount weaker. And then say, would an adult man beat 100 of those small children? And I know at least one person is out there thinking, oh, but there's the different muscle attachments and it works totally different for gorillas. I know, I'm taking it into account. This is a great paper by Bezel, Hutchinson, Hublin, and Melillo, and it goes into completely awesome detail about the differences of how the different muscle attachments works for gorillas versus for humans. And I definitely recommend giving it a read if you've got the time. It doesn't matter because what we're talking about now is can a hundred things much weaker than you do damage in large enough numbers? And that doesn't matter on the muscle attachments because muscle attachments are about your generative force 
and not how much damage you can receive. And it is true that gorillas have thicker skulls and sturdier bones than we do, but the humans are not winning this fight by breaking the arms of the gorilla. This fight is being won by damage to soft tissues and sensitive body parts, overwhelming gorilla defenses by overwhelming number of limbs. Let's take a, a gorilla on the larger end of the scale that weighs 205 kilograms versus a human that weighs 66 kilograms. It weighs 3.1 times more. Now this paper by Falk, Osselman, Dotan, Brunton, Clentro, Shaw, and Gabriel was the best study that I could find comparing the strength of men versus boys. Now, of course, the men were stronger, and funnily enough, they're stronger even when size normalized. But the real thing we want to know is how much stronger are they? Well, the average men were 81.7 kilograms, and the average boy was 32.7 kilograms, which means they're around two and a half times bigger than the boys, which is kind of in the neighborhood of how much larger a gorilla is than a human. But what they found is that they weren't two and a half times stronger they were actually three times stronger in extension and three and a half times stronger in flexion. We can extrapolate that out a little bit, although not exactly, I know, but we can say that if they were three times bigger, that instead they'd be more like four and a half times stronger, which again, sounds like a lot. But then if you have 10 kids on one arm, even if you're four and a half times stronger, you're still not going to be able to do anything. If you did go just by pure body mass, though, if a gorilla is 3.1 times bigger than an average man, then what you'd be looking for for the equivalent size down would be a child that weighs 21.29 kilograms. And the best estimate I could find for that was from the CincinnatiChildrens.org website and found that kids will reach 21.9 kilograms or 48 pounds right around the age of six, which means the absolute best case scenario for a gorilla fighting 100 men would be like an average adult fighting 100 American six-year-olds. And that's best case because adults are more intelligent, adults can be more coordinated, and as we've just seen from the previous study, adults are actually stronger by body mass than children are. I think it'd be a little bit closer to accurate to say the experience would be like a fully grown adult fighting 108 year olds. And I think most people would have to admit that an eight year old can hurt you if they kick you in just the right place. And I think most people would agree that if a six-year-old hitting you in just the right place is going to hurt a whole lot, then an adult man hitting the gorilla in just the right place is also going to hurt a whole lot. And that's it. That's the official, most scientifically accurate answer that we have access to of would 100 men beat one gorilla so with, without weapons, whether the gorilla runs away, it doesn't matter. There's absolutely no way for the gorilla to win. That's the most comprehensive answer we're going to get unless... Elon Musk or Mr. Beast or something throws a hundred people in a ring with a gorilla, which I'd watch it to be honest. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. This took me so long to do good research on. So if you're the kind of person who likes longer videos or things that are maybe more well-researched than the average internet video, um, definitely give this a share. It helps the channel a whole lot. If you have what you think is compelling counter arguments, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll read them and respond. All right, see you next time. I also found some information that the tallest silverback gorilla ever was 1.95 meters tall, six foot four, and that the heaviest one was 267 kilograms or almost 600 pounds. And the source was the fucking Guinness Book of World Records again. <laughs> they can't keep getting away with it.